This is the second part of a video program exploring the interesting story of the transition of St. Paul's from church to national park site. Part one is also available on this YouTube channel. Part one left off exploring the congregation at St. Paul's in the final two decades of the active church, including the important role of a woman named Ruth Harewood. The congregants of the 1960s and 70s were pious people who valued the church as a religious home built for the good of the community to help people, insisted Ms. Harewood, but they lacked the personal wealth or channels to funds necessary to sustain St. Paul's. Responsibility devolved to the Episcopal Diocese, which was overextended in Mount Vernon. It was a small, religiously and ethnically diverse city, shrinking in population, and there were five Episcopal parishes. St. John the Divine, an Episcopal church meeting in a small 20th century edifice, was only a mile away. Several of the Episcopal churches in Mount Vernon were struggling to maintain sizable, viable congregations, and some consolidation was probably necessary. Even more challenging, people moving into the adjacent radius of southern Westchester County in the northern Bronx, the traditional St. Paul's neighborhoods, usually preferred other Christian denominations or even different faiths. Cultural shifts also reduced attendance at religious services by younger people. These symptoms of a church in decline are hardly exclusive to St. Paul's in the period under discussion, but the distinction lay in the additional value of St. Paul's as a historic site that could be preserved through alternative measures. The historical time frame of the 1976 bicentennial galvanized this approach. People were eager to preserve surviving structures that really linked them to the era of the American Revolution, like St. Paul's Church. Many individuals and groups favored ceding the property to historical agency. Historical societies, friends groups, and even the National Council of the Girl Scouts advocated the transfer of the land to the federal government. More importantly, leaders of the Episcopal Church were interested in the conveyance of the grounds. Since the 1950s, St. Paul's had functioned as a mission church, which meant the Central Diocese of New York provided substantial underwriting support of operating costs. Bishop Paul Moore of the Diocese of New York and J. Stuart Wetmore, suffragan bishop of the church in Westchester County, were involved in consultations with local Congressman Richard Ottinger about transferring the property to the Department of the Interior for its stewardship by the National Park Service. It is a historic gem that we can no longer afford to maintain, Bishop Wetmore said in 1975, when a survey calculated costs for critical maintenance and upgrades on the church at $100,000, or about $427,000 today. If that means we would no longer be able to use it as a gathering place for a congregation, then we would have to accept it. A part-time assignment by the 1970s, Reverend John Zacker shepherded the congregation in the final years, conducting an early morning service before traveling the short distance to lead an addi additional Episcopal observance at St. John the Divine. Reverend Zacker argued that the religious mission needed fulfillment and proposed that the diocese might combine the two small memberships at St. Paul's, perhaps sustaining the parish? But the historical value and operational costs of St. Paul's conflicted with the fading prospects of salvaging the religious community which worshipped at the church. The six-acre property improved with two buildings, including an 18th-century stone edifice and about 2,500 memorial gravestones, was far more expensive to maintain than other local Episcopal properties. Additionally, St. Paul's represented sufficient historical value to attract the interest of another controlling party, the federal government. Those compelling circumstances persuaded the diocese. An agreement to transfer the property, which included immediate funding for emergency repairs, was reached in November 1978. With the realization that a secession of the church was on the horizon, Reverend Zacher remembered that some of the remaining parishioners had already shifted loyalties to other houses of worship. Our congregation kind of faded away, since most people saw what was coming, he recalled. He preached the last regular Sunday service before a small gathering that year, and the remaining congregation merged with St. John the Divine Episcopal Church, 
which was destroyed in a fire in 1988. To accommodate the church's utilization for secular activities under the Park Service, St. Paul's was deconsecrated in November 1980. A few tears were shed and Ms. Harewood somberly captured the spirit of the final moments. I would have liked to save it some other way, but we couldn't. A new chapter in the history of St. Paul's commenced.